Little People, Big Dreams Louise Bourgeois Written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vegara One Christmas day in Paris, a little girl was born. Her name was Louise. She was not the gift-wrapped boy her father had wanted her to be, but her mother loved her very much. Every day after school, Louise helped at the family tapestry studio, where huge pieces of fabric were dyed and sewn. Her mother asked her to help by filling in a missing section of tapestry. Here, Louise learned to draw legs and feet. One day, her mother became ill. Louise was terribly upset. She realized that painting was the only way to let go of her fear and anger. After her mother died, Louise decided to study art. Her father refused to support her, so Louise found a way to pay for her studies, translating art classes into English for American students. The famous painter Fernand Leger visited her school and Louise took the chance to show him her work. He was impressed by her eye for shapes and gave her some great advice. Louise should become a sculptor. Louise opened a small gallery which was always full of art lovers. One of them was Robert an art history professor at New York University, talking about the latest trends they fell in love. Louise and Robert moved to New York. From the roof of her home, she saw huge skyscrapers that impressed her to create her first sculptures, lonely people made of wood. Every night, when her children went to bed, Louise kept working on sculptures, inspired by her childhood memories. They were quite strange and looked more like a nightmare than a happy dream. Some of them were even scary, but for those who didn't know her, Louise looked just like a charming lady who loved to visit art exhibitions on the arm of her husband. Louise was 70 when the Museum of Modern Art in New York finally honored her work. People found the show shocking and disturbing, but couldn't take their eyes off her sculptures. She went on to create huge cages filled with strange objects she had collected throughout her life. They were dark and creepy, and it took courage for someone to dare to look inside. To celebrate her 80th birthday, Louise brought giant spiders to museum around the world. People felt like tiny ants next to them, but not her. They reminded her of her loving mother, mending clothes at her tapestry studio. By using art to confront her fears, little Louise became one of the most important artists of the 20th century and the grandmother of modern art. Born on a snowy Christmas day in 1911, Louise arrived to parents Louise and Josephine to their house on Boulevard Saint-Germain, Paris. Louise's little brother, Pierre, was born two years later, and before long the family moved to a suburb just outside of Paris, where her mother ran a tapestry restoration workshop. Around this time, Louise's mother became sick with the Spanish flu. Louise spent a lot of her childhood caring for her mother, who was also her best friend and biggest supporter. Louise's feelings of loss in these years would become the foundation for her work as an artist. When she went to college in Paris, she quickly became a talented painter and printmaker. A teacher there, Fernand Leger, saw something special in her work. He encouraged her to explore her work as three-dimensional objects in sculptures. 
Moving to New York in 1945 with her husband Robert, Louise began to create sculptures using old wood found on the roof of her apartment. This was just the beginning of her 60-year career and the start of her story as the world's leading sculptor. Her retrospective at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York in 1982 was the first one devoted to a female artist. It was also the moment when the world sat up and watched Louise explore what it meant for women to be subjects rather than objects of art. Her bravery and passion for self-expression paved the way for modern artists and art lovers alike. The End <laughs>